Welcome to the Wake Up Dad Show, a Daddiest production. This podcast is for you, Dad. This is where we talk about all things related to dadhood, from parenting to relationships to financial and physical health. Your hosts, Dr. Scott and Dr. Evan, are two dads who are committed to helping you. Join our Facebook community by searching Daddiest, where conscious dads connect and collaborate. Hey, dads, welcome to another episode of the Wake Up Dad Show, a Daddiest production. I'm your co-host, Dr. Ev, and I've got with me Dr. Scotty V. What's up hello. tonight, Scotty? Hello, hello, hello. How's it going? I am just getting my dog, my new brand new dog, out the door because we're toilet training. So mm. any of you dads out there who have dogs or who have gone through toilet training, you know what I'm talking about. It's like, it's like a kid, except they don't have nappies. They just do it anywhere, right? At least with a kid. <laughs> <laughs> He's with a kid. They got a nappy on that you can clean it up. It's contained, but our puppy is doing his business everywhere at the moment. So if I'm distracted, uh, that's probably why. <laughs> <laughs> is that the intro you thought so you might hear? Oh at? my gosh! I've got a raccoon walking right in front of me here. This is interesting. <laughs> it's our that's it's so wildlife crazy. show today. It's the dad. As you're talking about it. Yeah, because you're talking about a dog, a big, huge raccoon just walked in front of me. So just in case the viewers are wondering, why are you seeing raccoons walk in front of you? Um, sometimes my vehicle is my office, um, which is at the moment my case. So um, I'm watching the raccoon um, find his way into our uh, trash. <laughs> he just got in. <laughs> oh, man, it's hilarious. Anywho. And, um, and, I, and I bet you that that raccoon is like 10 times the size of my dog right now. Oh, my dog is like yeah. the size of my, my kid's teddy bear. And it is the bloody cutest thing you've ever seen, which makes it a lot easier when it mm. shits on the floor, makes it a lot yeah. easier because it's so damn cute. Anyway, let's I get think on that's the, the thing. Eh? No, but really like, I think, <laughs> I think that's the thing though, isn't it? Like all these, um, you know, like the the puppy or our baby you know they're so cute it doesn't matter if they they could literally like vomit on us or you know whatever and it's like oh but you know still our baby and still cute and yeah yeah wouldn't be so much fun now <laughs> well no no when they're doubt older. about it that's uh, yeah that's right if you know if the kids when they're older and stuff um start doing that it's like Nah, man, you can clean that up yourself. That's gross. <laughs> <laughs> You're not cute. That's not a cute vomit. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but for some reason, even vomit that comes out of like little tiny puppies and babies and stuff is, is not that yeah. bad. Not that bad. Um, oh. oh, look yeah. at that. Oh, I, had, I saw a thing on Facebook, which is what today's show is about, but this is a totally different one. I don't even, he's one of these guys who's that, you know, your friend, no friend on Facebook. Um, mm. You know, the friend that you don't know. And um, mm. this guy was sitting there. It was just a picture of him. And it was like, how's your Friday night or whatever it was. And he had this huge, and I mean huge thing of green slop from his shoulder all the way down his chest. And um, it, like somebody, somebody wrote a message and said, is that vomit or poo? Like you, it was that green that you could not even tell what was what. Really? Yeah. And I was like, well, I couldn't tell either. I had a look. I was like, I don't know. Is that vomit or poo? And it was vomit because they, you know, fed the kid a green smoothie or something. But um, yeah. And, you know, that's what you do with kids. Which leads me oh. to the actual show. Oh, do you have something else? Well, I mean, I'm just trying to figure out what you just said. Uh, so it was a picture of a kid with, with like, literally no, no. green all over? Or him? No, no, him. him. Him, it was like the kid puked all over his shoulder. Really? Like so this guy a... took a picture of himself? Like, it was... Yes. Yeah, it was a selfie. Oh, my But it was, like, God. the vomit was all, <laughs> like, from, from behind. You could see it was, like, probably on the couch behind him. And then all from his shoulder, all the way across his chest. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Which, which I thought was really... Because yeah, we are such on a side topic right now. But anyway, um, my kid, 
like literally, I think it was once, if not zero times vomited when she was a baby. Never. Yeah. Yeah. Never. Yeah, not same, once. same with mine. No, our kids, yeah, like, I mean, our, they, they did when they got older, but it was like, they maybe once or twice in their lifetime they have, but uh, yeah, not when they were kids, they weren't vomiters. No. And, and, and yeah, I think it was maybe six months ago or something, she got sick and she uh, had a vomit and she was like, oh my God, what's this? What? Like, I don't yeah. even know what this is. Yeah. It was very strange because I know a lot of kids do that, the whole vomit thing. Um, and it's funny with kids too, hey, so many of these kids will vomit, especially like when they're young, young with like just breast milk or, or you know, formula or whatever. And they'll just vomit and go, but And it's like literally they just look back and forth. It's kind of like, eh, did I, yeah. what, what's wrong? Like, yeah, no big whatever, deal. no big deal. Like a, like a sneeze. Yeah. yeah, yeah, not even. Not even, like yeah. not as big as a sneeze, because a sneeze they might go, oh, gee. and then, oh, wait a minute, what was that? Like scare themselves or something. <laughs> the vomit's like literally open your mouth, that, yeah. and like no reaction <laughs> whatsoever. It is the no. scariest thing. It's the weirdest thing. It's like, is this kid possessed or something? What is going on here? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All it right. doesn't even seem real because it just shoots out. That's, yeah, there's, there's, yeah I mean, especially there's not a the whole lot of stuff. Like, yeah, there's no like pre, you know, like as adults, there's a lot of pre movement oh, and there's stuff so much going pre. on. Th think about Tons it. Like, of pre. <laughs> I mean, the last time I was sick was probably due to excessive alcohol intake or something. <laughs> you know, probably something. And, you know, it's that whole like, you know, it like probably an hour or two before you puke. Oh, so, oh, oh you're holding I had that. too much to drink. <laughs> you're, oh, you're holding that back. Oh, did I? Well, first of all, it's, did I have too much to drink? Oh, man, did I? And then, like, a half hour later, you're like, oh, yeah, I had too much to drink. <laughs> and then another half hour later, it's like, oh, man, I should maybe be oh, sick. Man, <laughs> man I, like, I, maybe I feel better. Maybe I'd feel better. But man, I don't want to be sick. But, but I think no. I'd feel better. No, I don't want to. But I think I'd yeah. feel better. But I don't want oh, it's to. the worst. Uh, it's the it's worst best. It, the worst best thing. Uh, the worst it's, best it's, thing. <laughs> it's, it's awful. Yeah. It's awful, but you definitely it definitely helps. It's oh, I, you just even the thought of it uh, definitely. Uh, the, hu the, the human body. Uh, it's it's pretty amazing thing that you know pretty amazing. it'll do that. Yeah, it'll do that, and and you feel better. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Good good ab workout. A good ab oh, workout. Such a crazy ab workout. Hey? Phenomenal. Like the next, oh, the next yeah. day, your abs are more sore pack. than ever. Six, yeah. Yeah. Six just, pack abs. Just get smashed every night and puke up. <laughs> you, could, you could start a five minute abs program. Um, <laughs> you, you, every night you do the, you do the pre. Actually, this, this is a nice segue into our uh, topic tonight. So, um, Scott, what's the uh, what was the post that you're referring to? All right, so the the baby puke post was not the post that I was referring to, but but today's episode we're going to talk about this post. So um, can't remember where I got it. Just screenshotted it. Doesn't say where I got it. So unfortunately, sorry, can't give a shout out. This is dear men, and we're going to obviously just change that just slightly to dear dads. Close your eyes. Imagine you have a daughter. Imagine she is dating a guy just like you. Did you just smile? Because if you didn't, you should probably change. Mm. Pretty, pretty powerful. Emoji so after simple. That. Like, is there like a fist emoji? There should be a fist emoji after that. Like, you know what like, I mean? punch, like punch yourself in the but, face? What? Yeah, yeah. Like that's a fist emoji comment because it's like pow bam powerful yeah yeah no there's actually uh there's a picture of like a hipster dude with a big red beard and and big ass biceps mm, interesting picture really really has nothing to do with it but um no you know no. but hipsters in so yeah we'll, we'll go with that so so anyway yeah yeah so yeah, let's dive in i mean uh First of all, I, I'm a huge fan of um, taking inventory. Um, <clears throat> I think, you know, we don't really make change unless we actually are aware of 
something to change. We were talking a bit on the pre-show and, uh, you know, I think about, I mean, we got a couple of ways we can go with this, but definitely one of them is, is that our kids are learning from us what's acceptable, what's normal every single day. They're learning from us. Hopefully they're learning from us, you know, the dad that we're talking to tonight, hopefully you're, you're spending time with your kids. Well, even um, if you're not, they're still learning from you, right? It's interesting. Um, been listening to the, the book by Warren Farrell, um, The Boy Crisis. And uh, he talks a little bit about it in that book is that like, even if your dad really was not ever around, uh, he still taught you lots. And one of those things was that he was never around, right? So it's interesting, mm-hmm. no, matter, no matter what position your dad is in, in your life, whether it's like a pivotal position where he's there all the time or, or not at all, he's still there teaching you potentially on a daily basis. But that, that's not necessarily what we're talking about now, but it is an interesting concept for those out there who, you know, don't have or never had a relationship with their dad is that they're still teaching you um, all the time. Mm-hmm. Uncomfortable pause. Well, <laughs> I, was, I was waiting. I was waiting for you to say <laughs> I was waiting for you to say something and, and, and you had nothing. <laughs> you had nothing. I, no, I didn't. I'm, I'm actually, I'm really thinking about it. Um, I was thinking about something to say uh, along the lines of like teaching, teaching in, teaching in the silence, which is kind of what I did there was just total silence. But I mean, if you're absent, then you're still teaching. Um, like you said, like the lesson is, is like, you're not there, right? You're not there. And oh, another thing that happened in my life that my dad's not there for another lesson happens. Right. Absolutely. Um, Right. Uh, so, you know, getting back to that question as to whether you smile or not. Um, so like, you know, the whole idea is, is to take some inventory and, and first validate, first evaluate that, that question. And, you know, would you want your daughter to be dating somebody like you? Um, and if not, what would you change? We, and, and go ahead. I was going to say, and that, that's where like, we really want to dive a little bit deeper into the self-evaluation part on today's podcast and have you guys have a think about it because uh, it's chapter five in our book, you know, the dad playbook that's coming out in the next few months called taking stock where you are and where you want to be. All right. And the problem we're trying to solve there is this awareness situation. Cause if you got your head stuck in the sand or stuck up your own ass and you don't know what the hell's going on in your own life and you're not self-evaluating regularly, then you have no idea where to change. It's like, if you've got a, you're on an expedition and you got a map, and you're trying to get to this particular point on the map and you know everything about that position, but you actually don't know where you are on the map. There's no freaking way you're ever going to get there. No matter what, how, no matter how much, you know, the best map in the world, the best compass, the best, everything, you don't know where you're standing right now. There's no way you're ever going to get to where your destination is. So it's super important that we, we regularly go back and see where we're at on our self evaluation scale. So I, I think, one of the best ways to look at it is, is through our P6, you know, through what we call the P6 of dadhood, which is our power, performance, parenting, providing, passion, and play. So I think we should you know, go through each of these P6 and just talk a little bit about a self-evaluation, where you are and where you want to be. And that will probably really simply answer that question if you're not sure. Like you know, that question, would you smile or not? Think of your daughter, think of she's dating somebody just like you. And I mean, just like you, not like a little bit like you or has a little bit of a similarity. She was dating you basically just in another form because that would be really weird if she's dating you. That's just not, that's not cool, right? So not you, but somebody exactly like you. And would you smile or not, you know? Would, are, you, are you the man that you would like your daughter to be dating? 
not literally. Yeah, starting with passion. I mean, you look at so passion being relationship. So um, really, the the question is, is if you were to look at your relationship with your wife and your daughter is learning how that's all going, you know, through seeing how you're interacting with your wife, are you respecting your wife? Are you making decisions together? Are you planning things together? Do you have fun together? Do you listen when she's speaking and respond in a respectful way? Um, you treat your wife like, you know, the queen, do you like, you know, do you do things for her? Do you, um, you know, tell her you love her? Do you give her a kiss when you see her and a kiss when you leave and, um, you know, do acts of kindness and, you know, essentially take care of her, uh, that sort of thing. Um, I mean, when I'm saying those things, like, wouldn't you want your daughter to have a man to treat her like that? And, and if we're not like that in our relationship with our wife, what is our daughter learning to be acceptable in how a man treats a woman? Right. Yeah. I think you mentioned it earlier is that our kids are picking up from us all the time, you know, on the verbal and nonverbal cues and the things that we're doing. And, you know, I can't give you a quote, but I, I know I've heard it somewhere in some scientific literature that um, the relationship that your daughter sees growing up is statistically likely the relationship that she's going to end up being in when she's a woman because she sees that and that's her main cue and her main learning of what a relationship should look like. And so, mm-hmm. you know, if you're an abusive man to your wife um it's pretty likely your daughter's going to grow up and end up in an abusive relationship Mm -hmm. so you know these are things that when you do that introspection and self-evaluation um you you're not only doing it for you you know in in passion for example how to have the best relationship with your wife or partner or whoever that is because you know there's a lot of dads out there listening who are either single dads or who aren't with the mother of the kids anymore and they're in a new relationship that that's okay but it's just what's going on in that relationship because again your daughter's going to see that she's going to see that relationship and emulate it and mirror it so super important so where would you rate yourself say on an example of one to ten in what we call passion which is your, your your significant relationship where do you rate yourself Is it closer to a one? Is it closer to a 10? And from there, figure out, would your daughter, would you uh, smile if your daughter was dating somebody like you in that relationship? Mm. Yeah. And with any of these, you know, it's picking one thing that you would want to change in the next 30 days. That's going to make an impact in your life and move the needle. You know, I, I think it's all about taking, you know, taking one step at a time. Uh, new habits take some time to form. Um, a lot of people wonder how long does it take for a new habit to form? And, um, and my famous answer to that is the habit it takes as long as it takes for the habit to be a habit. <laughs> no, nah, that's not it. We've got a quote in the book. We've got a quote in the I book know. by you. Do you know what it is? I know. You don't even Pretty know what it is that. anymore. No. Nah. On habits. You do it every day till you're doing it every day. Yeah. It's a habit. Yeah. It's a habit, right? That, uh, there's no, I, I think this thing about, you know, form a habit in seven days, 14 days, 30 days, 60 days, 120 days, seven hours, four minutes. It's all rubbish. You do it every day till you do it every day. Yeah, it could actually be a habit on day two. If absolutely. you continue doing it every day, it could, be, it could absolutely be a habit if you do it every day after that. That's right. right. So the habit so, yeah, wins pick- habit. When you're doing it every day, it's a habit. <laughs> Unless it's something that you're supposed to do every week. Unless it's something you're you supposed do it, to do every week. Then it's yeah. every day is too much. Yeah. So you could actually... <laughs> You could actually do something on day two that you're supposed to do every day and say, I've got a new habit. Absolutely. 
moving on. Moving on. So yeah, pick <laughs> one thing and, and creating some change is a really good idea. Um, yeah, pick one thing. Move the needle. Let's, talk another, let's, not, let's, talk, let's not make this a jacuzzi experience. That's right. That's right, dads. We're, you know, we're, we're pushing you a little bit further on this episode for no other reason than that's what we're doing because we want better, right? I think we all would agree. I think anyone who's listening to this podcast is just looking for better. And, and so are we. And so we're learning all the time and trying to push the envelope um, to become better, you know, better at everything in, in what we call the P6. So uh, we've, we've talked about passion. Let's look at, we skipped to number five. P5 is passion. Let's go back to P1, which is power. Now, power really is your big picture, your vision, your purpose, your, your meaning, you know, your, what you want to leave as a legacy, all of that stuff, right? So, you know, the way I think about it is, you know, my daughter's only, well, she's nine uh, tomorrow, you know, once this podcast is released, she'll probably be nine three weeks ago or whatever, you know, whenever we release the podcast, but she's nine tomorrow. So, you know, I've got at least six or eight days before she starts dating. And um, so I got a little bit of time to think about it. (laughs) But, um, you know, I think about if my daughters um, and, you know, of course, teenagers are not like us. Right. Like, you know, we think back to when you were a teenager. But um, I'm just thinking, do I want her to bring home somebody she's dating who's like the the video playing dork who just doesn't do anything? who doesn't have any purpose, doesn't have any vision. And at that stage, I'm not looking for them to know what they want to do with their life and have everything set up. But, you know, somebody who's got something, got got a goal, got a purpose, have something in their lives. And at that age could be a sport, right? Or could be their schooling, or they could have a super high passion. And there's no doubt, we're not talking about passionate passion, like we just talked about P5 passion. I'm talking about you know, a passion for doing something in their life, because there's no doubt, if you look at it, having a passion for something in your life, no matter what it is for, you know, it could be for anything from collecting hockey cards to stamp collecting to it doesn't matter, is shown to have a much happier life and live longer, whatever the passion is. So at that age, I just want to see them have something, some kind of passion, something they're like, except for video games. <laughs> Because lots of kids are you know, passionate about their video games. I want something more than that. So for me, the smile would be something like that. What do you think in the power section, Ev? I think, again, like looking at what's, you know, what's your level of, of purpose and vision that you have in your life? You know, where are you from zero to 10? Are you living a purposeful life where you you know, you're driven from some sort of internal why that, um, you know, maybe a vision for your family or, um, you know, something that you want to achieve um, in business, whatever it may be. Uh, and, you know, communicating your vision with your family. And we talk about this in the book and it's like the concept of having a, a team, team uh, feel for your family. So your family's kind of like involved everybody is part of the team <laughs> and um and including everybody in your vision and in your purpose and talking about it and where you're going and you know and everybody's involved in some way shape or form and um understanding what it is that you're doing and maybe even helping you know maybe there's roles that your family can take on and I mean, again, like that's going to be something that's normal, becomes normal for your daughter. Um, if you have a daughter to, um, to, to have in their life. And like you said, that's, that's a really positive thing. Um, purpose drives action and um, growth and, um, you know, relationships are occurring through um, making purpose, purpose occur and, um, being service oriented can be a big, strong part of it as well. So there's so much that can come from it. Uh, but again, uh, if we're, you know, I think if somebody doesn't have purpose or feel like they have purpose, that's a, that can really affect somebody's mental and emotional, um, health and like, just feel like really alive. They, they could really not feel alive. They could feel really down and just like, what the hell am I doing here? And it's an interesting thing because 
purpose comes from inside and it's, it is somewhat of a muscle that we have to develop. We have to learn how to become purposeful. Uh, and so again, it's, it's like, and there's an element, if we don't have it, then we have to find it within. It's like we create it. And, um, and so taking that time to first evaluate, um, are you, are you, are you emulating what you would um, want your your daughter to be dating as far as um, you know a purposeful driven um, person, uh, or are you lacking massively in that area and about as purposeful as a brick wall where there's just nothing going on there? It's just there, right and boring. Um, you know, so that's something to look at and and. And, and again, setting a goal um, around it to, to move that needle up to the next level. And so, um, yeah, those are my thoughts. I'll be devil's advocate for a second and say, hey, man, a brick wall could have lots of purpose. Tons of purpose. Tons of purpose. So it doesn't have to be sure. exciting to anyone else but you. And so in the book, we call it our daddy's power statement. We have this really cool exercise that we take you through to try and help you to find that because it's one of the biggest things we hear all the time as dads out there going, well, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know what this means. Like the, the title of our chapter for that one is called what's all this bullshit about having a purpose anyway. Right. So mm. it's, it's a word that can, that can really conjure up a lot of negative feelings in dads because they, they get guilty around it. Cause like, well, I don't know what my passion is. I don't know what my, my purpose is in my life. And it's all right if you don't know at this stage, but, you know, we can take you through some ideas to help try and find and create that for yourself. So next one, performance. Now, performance in the P6 is really all about your, your physical health, right? It's your, very simply put, your diet and your exercise and those types of things. And our idea around this is not to be like the men's fitness health model on the front of the cover of the magazine type thing, unless you want to be, Right. But that's not what we're talking about. It's really about having the energy and the vitality to live a long life, to see your kids grow old themselves, and to do what you want to do in life. To be able to do everything you want to do and have not anything physically holding you back from achieving all the goals for yourself and all the goals for your family, right? And so for me, I think about, um, you know, if my daughter was dating somebody, I'd want them to be fit. You know, to, to have enough self-respect to be fit and active and, and have some kind of awareness that, you know, my body is a vessel and it's the only vessel I have on this planet, whatever your belief system is, to, uh, for me to do what I want to do and need to do in this thing called life on earth. So no doubt about it, that's a big one for me is around performance for anyone who's going near my daughter. and. Um, yeah. What's your thoughts on that one? Oh, yeah. This is, this is a big one because I mean, health, uh, it, like we don't have anything if we don't have our health. And if, if the, the man that, that marries our, our daughters is unhealthy, you know, and has, you know, cardiovascular challenge or, you know, heart disease of some sort or you name it, it anything that, you know, is a lifestyle related um, disease, what we'll call it disease. Um, you know, it, it really has a massive toll on the family, you know, and it uh, decreases their, their ability to say provide, um, to perform, to be engaged, um, travel becomes an issue. So then, you know, that kind of adventure of life and all that stuff, it, it's a big, big one. And, um, you know, the majority of things that we deal with nowadays are, you know, the, the, um, the issues that people have are mostly lifestyle related and they're really just come down to choice. And, uh, and so, you know, like, again, it's, it's taking a look at like, where are you in your performance between, you know, zero and 10? Are you, you know, are you, are you doing great? Are you setting an example? Um, are you, is that, is that the performance that you would want 
uh, your daughter to be with? Um, or are you at a level where, you know, you're basically just finding your way to the couch when you get home from work. So you're so exhausted, you got nothing left and you know, and you're smashing down a few beers every night. Cause you're just like, you know, just trying to kind of drop the stress and then, and then repeat, <laughs> rinse, wash and repeat, uh, type experience and, you know, poor diet and, you know, I've got or blood work or whatever it may be and really lining yourself up for things like, you know, diabetes or obesity challenges, um, you know, all kinds of stuff. So, um, yeah, it, it really, again, being aware, um, would you be happy with, with, um, with your level of health, uh, for and performance uh, for your daughter? And if not making some changes. And I think the next one is, is a very obvious one, parenting, you know, how are you as a dad? How do you self-evaluate your, you know, yourself mm-hmm. in, in where you're at as a dad? And I think, you know, a lot of dads out there are pretty hard on themselves. Um, you know, we, I think we see it within our daddiest group and then much more so within some of the other dad groups that we're involved with as well. Um, a lot of dads beat themselves up a lot, you know, and it's about, Partly some self-acceptance, realizing that you're doing the best you can, but then also, you know, it might be a, a stepping stone to step up as a dad and go, oh, man, I would not want my daughter to be with a guy and then them have kids, my grandkids, and he be the dad that I'm being right now. You know, that, that could be a really big wake-up call for you to go, wow, you know, I, I need to step up as a parent. Yeah, there's a there's a couple of things that um, <clears throat> maybe we did a podcast on, you know, are you a deadbeat dad? And we highlighted some of the there's I think five five areas uh, five five signs of a deadbeat dad, and you know it's definitely a spectrum, um, you know, of uh, of severity. Let's let's call it, um, you know, but essentially again, it's it's looking at um, and one of the biggest things is, is just spending time, you know, taking time and like wanting to take time and be present you know, with your kids when your kids are talking to you. Um, you know, one of two things, either you totally give them your undivided attention and make them feel like they should feel like they're the most important thing in the world. Or <clears throat> if you're busy at the moment, you turn to them and say something like, like I said this to my daughter today, um, she caught me while I was doing something for one of my other kids. And then my other kid had some, had me next in line for something they wanted me to do. And I'm like, I've got something else that I've got going on, like cooking dinner. And then my other kid came to me and was like, dad. And I said, Bell, you are so important to me. And what you have to say is, super important as well um but i'm gonna need about five to ten minutes and i'm gonna let you know when i'm ready and then you'll you'll have my undivided attention and she you know she she accepted that and she walked away um versus you know like ignoring her or half listening or um you know just kind of like go figure it out yourself or or whatever you know might come out of a frustrated parent's mouth when they feel overloaded, overwhelmed, um, you know, stressed or whatever it may be. Uh, and, uh, you know, that's just one example of different ways of how we could deal with situations. Um, and then also time span is, is a big one. So it's, it's, we talk about this in our podcast is, uh, the concept of the time that you're spending is present time. Uh, you know, you could be doing anything um, with them, but you're like really present to them. You know, you're, you're like really watching the expressions on their face and you're seeing the smiles or the learning or how they're talking. And you're really like in that space of like wonderment of like, wow, this is freaking extraordinary that that little baby that, that we had is now, you know, able to, to think this way and, 
just be in that space of like in the moment of how extraordinary it is. And, you know, just something along those lines can make a huge difference in the connection that we have as a parent um, versus like we're just so in our phone or whatever it may be, or just, you know, like that we never take the time to really, um, you know, give our kids that, um, that attention. Um, so again, looking at there's lots of different things to do with parenting. There's lots of elements to it. Um, but just getting like a snapshot, do you feel like, um, how you are as a parent is, is what you would want, um, your daughter to find in, um, in the person that she, she dates or she marries. And the next one is providing. Now, we know in today's world, um, the whole role of providing is changing. You know, stereotypically, even one or two generations ago, it was essentially dad's main role. Um, but, you know, that's being lost a little bit. Um, and things are changing with a lot of dual income houses or even the, the, um, the mom or wife being the major breadwinner in the house. But as far as providing, are you happy with where your family is at? And is there something that you could be doing more for and understanding more, investing better? Um, There's so many different aspects to this as well. It's not just about, you know, what job you have and what you make. Because, again, a lot we know there's quite a few in our group of stay-at-home dads who, you know, aren't the the breadwinners at all. They're the ones taking care of the kids and mom's out making the money. And, you know, that doesn't mean you're not involved in that situation. And would you be happy uh, with your daughter dating the person who has the mentality around money that you have? Mm. Again, there's so many elements to, to providing, and we talk about them in, in the book. Because um, providing is it's, it's, what, it's what we're talking about right now, which is the what everybody would think of, which is bringing home income for the family. But there's the other considerations that whether we're working or not or bringing the money in or not, uh, we can have a huge role in, um, which is the management of, of money, um, organizing our, our budget and um, you know, setting up ways to create leverage with money to make sure that we're protected in case something happens with insurance, whether that be life insurance, home insurance, car insurance, travel insurance, um, having a will in place. Like these are all elements of providing. There's, you know, there's, there's quite a few, quite a few elements to it that if we don't take care of these things, then it can have a huge, huge negative impact if something happens. So, um, for example, like if our house caught on fire and we didn't have house insurance, that could obviously make a big impact. Doesn't matter so much how much money we're bringing in from our job because our house is gone (laughs) and we don't have, you know, how many people have enough money to just like rebuild their home, uh, just hanging out in the bank. So, uh, I wouldn't say anybody in, in our city probably has that. So it's the idea of taking care of those things. So again, um, are you, where are you at in the spectrum of, of taking care of the elements that are important when it comes to providing? And I think one of the things, you know, this is really like, financial IQ and the, all the components of what is needed um, in today's world uh, to protect ourselves and to, um, to have that security in case something goes wrong, that, you know, all those different elements, we actually need to educate our kids on those. Those aren't things that uh, were taught in school, typically. We're not taught them in school. And, um, and so by communicating things that are important, like those things, um, 
and and so and the, the the things around health and um all the all the piece really it's it's like communicating the values that and and the elements that need to be in place to have a successful family you know to have a successful future as a family <clears throat> it's important because some of these things that we're talking about how does your daughter know what to look for you know in the different elements of the six p's when there's no language around it there's no understanding about what those things actually mean and um so yeah it's it's part of i think our part of our uh, duty per se lack of a better word part of our job to um to communicate these things with our kids and make sure they're educated about it so again looking at where we're at from scale of one to ten and providing and is there an area that we can move that up and um and maybe maybe that element could be actually communicating with our kids more and teaching them more about these things so they know what to look for yeah great point and the last one is play now you might be thinking what, what does that mean and i think in this discussion the things that stand out to me around play are i'm sure most of the dads out there listening, the idea of that you are a combination of the five people that you hang out with the most. And so looking at who you hang out with determines a lot of what you are going to do in your life and, and who you are and who you're becoming. So looking at, you know, in this situation, this boy who's dating your daughter, you know, who would you want him to be hanging around with? Who are you hanging around with? And are they people that are going to keep you accountable to what you want to achieve in life are they people who are there with your best interest in mind or are they just sort of energy vampires and, and really not um there for you and your mission and purpose in life and not there you know you're not there for them and it's just not a great relationship at all i think it's super important to make sure that you've got that part sorted with who you're hanging out with and the other one is that you know you're comfortable enough to be on your own sometimes, to play with yourself, you know, to, to just have a, have, have a hobby of your own, have some self-driven fun times, whether it be playing a guitar or, um, you know, some kind of great hobby. You know, a lot, of, a lot of dads out there do stuff with cars. I couldn't think of anything worse in my world. I would not want to be <laughs> having anything to do with cars. But a lot of dads love that tinkering mechanical stuff. Um, but yes, yeah, something like that, you know, and making sure that you, you're a well-rounded guy and that you're not losing yourself and doing too much of this parenting stuff. Mm -hmm. I actually read a great article yesterday. I think I shared it on my personal page about, you know, letting, and we talked about it. We had a podcast and it was about letting your kids be bored. And part of mm -hmm. that is for them and their imaginative play and creating new skill sets in your in your kids by letting them be bored and figuring out what they should do rather than having their whole life set up for them. But the other part of that is, is when you let your kids be bored, you have some more time for yourself as well. And that time can be spent, you know, sometimes just completely goofing off and doing stuff that's just, you know, recharging your batteries, watching a movie, chilling out, having a nap, but you know, having something creative in your own world as well. I know it's hard probably for us as dads to ever think of any time, you know, when you're actually bored. I can't remember the last time I was bored, you know, it's <laughs> too much. Life is too, like, there's another B word that stands out in my life and what, you know, it's the most common thing. How's life going? You know, what, what are you up to? Ah, oh, busy, busy, man, mm -hmm. busy. And, you know, and, and I'm stuck in that pattern as well at, at this part of my life. You know, imagine, imagine figuring out some time, we could quote unquote sort of be bored and, and create some imaginative skills for yourself. It'd be pretty cool. Um, so that's sort of my take on play. And, you know, where are you with that? Are you, have you lost yourself completely? Um, or are you taking time out for yourself and, and, you know, doing some self development? Yeah, I think, uh, I think I'm just thinking about my life. And at first you started talking about it. I'm like, wow, there's times when I was, like literally not having fun hardly ever it felt like um 
And then I started bringing in components that were things that I really loved to do. Like I love playing basketball. Um, I love working out and like seeing my body develop and grow and get strong. And, um, you know, I brought those elements back into my life. I like, I like going out, um, you know, with, with buddies and, and just being, you know, just being in that space of like talking about sports and watching a game and like, you know, I really enjoyed that. Um, so, you know, things like that. And it's, it's so important that, you know, I, and I'm very supportive of my wife when she's like, talks about, oh, you know, I'd like to go out with my friend. I'm like, yes, go. Like it's, it's I, she's so much happier, you know, when she goes out, you know, with a friend and, and, you know, and has a good time. Um, and I feel the same way. And I think that it's healthy, you know, to have that, have fun, to go play, whether it's sport or, um, you know, spending time, you know, with, with buddies, whatever it may be that we're doing. And, um, I would certainly want my daughter to be with somebody who has fun in their life. And, um, you know, and it also plays well into parenting, like having fun with the kids and, um, having fun with your wife and, you know, just like having fun. Um, so yeah, we're really highlighting that element of, of, you know, us dads, we, you know, we're all goofballs, right? We're, you know, we, we came from being a goofball and we're just big grown up goofballs that are acting like we, you know, we're adults now. And, uh, it's just allowing ourselves I think actually somebody commented on this in in Daddyus is like their kids are bringing out the kid in them and they absolutely love it. And I think, you know, I'm a little little bit off topic here because it's, but it's like the idea of like allowing yourself to enjoy life um, and, and not always being so, you know, serious and on purpose all the time. It's pretty important. You know, you can probably tell from the beginning half of this podcast when we're talking about raccoons and vomit that um, (laughs) we try try to keep things pretty fun and active, even though, you know, we're both busy dads with all kinds of craziness going on and even just coordinating between me and Ev being, I think it's a 14 hour time difference. Like it couldn't be worse in in trying to figure out times for us to get together and write this book and record these podcasts blah blah <laughs> blah 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 but we have we have a blast doing it and i think that that's probably why we're still friends yeah. <laughs> and we don't hate each oh, other we, after doing all of this stuff should we should we share how this podcast even started uh yeah sure i, think it's I don't know exactly story. what you mean so go for it <clears throat> so i had a movement happening uh, that i started Uh, called the global dad movement and i check online i see scott is asking his facebook friends what do they think of this name or that name for the podcast he's going to start and it was um you know a bunch of names that you know dad this dad that and i'm like what the heck like scotty and i were were best buds when uh we were in chiropractic college we were in the same year and we spent heaps of time together um, and then he moved off into Australia, uh, after we finished school and, um, yeah, we kept in touch, but it was very infrequently. Um, but then all of a sudden here we are doing the same thing, uh, having a, you know, a conversation around empowering, uh, men and dads, um, but doing it separately. And, uh, and then you invited me to come, come on and share my story on your, on your podcast. And we had a ball. We had so much fun. Uh, and it got me thinking. It's like, you know what? Like, that was a lot of fun. It'd be kind of nice to just do this on a regular basis. And, and then I came to you. And I'm like, hey, Scott, what do you think? And you're like, oh. You're like, you're, you, you were like hoping that I was going to ask you. Um, and, um, yeah, at least that's what I remember anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes the way we remember things is slightly different, but uh, no, that's, that's, that's the general, the general gist of the story for sure. And uh, God, that was, I think coming up on almost three years ago, I believe. 
two to three years anyway. Yeah. And so oh, we've, yeah, we've gone through all kinds of growth and development together. And, and, you know, now we're most of the way through this book and we're probably like 60 episodes into the podcast and, and, um, you know, we got lots of cool things coming for the group and all kinds of crazy stuff. So, you know, it's been super <clears> fun. And I think that's part of this play part is, you know, surrounding yourself with people who have common goals and visions and, and have fun while you're creating your passion back or while you're creating your um, power or your purpose back to P1. So dads, back to the original question. Let me read it out again. As it says on here, where is it? Oh, it's gone. Where did it go? Hold on. Where did it go? Dear men, dear dads, close your eyes. Imagine you have a daughter Imagine she is dating a guy just like you. Did you just smile? If the answer is no, change. So I hope that, uh, you know, lights a little bit of a fire under some of the dads out there. If you, if you didn't smile to that, then uh, you might have some work to do. Till next time, dads. If you haven't been on our Facebook page yet, check us out at uh, Daddies for Conscious Dads. Connect and collaborate on Facebook. Ask to join the group, and we'll see you in there. Have a great day, Dads. Thanks for listening. Remember, join our Facebook community, Daddies, where Conscious Dads connect and collaborate.